Okay, in this session I'd like to take a look at Hibbler problem 4-130. And in this problem we have a slab that's located in the XY plane and we have a system of forces, four forces, all directed in the negative Z direction. And what we want to do is we want to figure out if we took away these four forces, where could we put a resultant force that would produce the same rotation about the x-axis and the same rotation about the y-axis. When I say rotation, I mean the moments produced around each one of those axes. So this is essentially what the problem is going to look like. Here are the applied forces and what we want to turn them into is into a single resultant force and what we're looking at is directing, finding the y bar, in other words the location at this resultant force has to be located and its x bar location. Using the bar notation because we're eventually going to utilize this notation when we're talking about the centroids of particular items. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the resultant force. So the resultant force is a three-dimensional vector but it only has a z component, in this case a negative z component. So the z component is obtained rather by adding up the two 50 kilonewton loads and the two 20 kilonewton loads for a total load of 140 kilonewtons. It's in the negative z direction, so we get a negative, so we get a 0i plus a 0j plus the negative 140 kilonewtons. All right, so the first thing we want to do, after all, rather the second thing, is to calculate the moment about the x-axis that results from the application of these four forces. So we see that the 20 kilonewton load passes through the x-axis, so it doesn't have any moment arm, so it cannot produce any moment. Where this 50 kilonewton load has a moment arm of 3, this 50 kilonewton load has a moment arm of 8 plus 2 plus 3, which is 13, and this 20 kilonewton load has a moment arm of 8 plus 3 for a moment arm of 11. Now, these th all these forces are going to cause what we would say clockwise or negative rotation around the x-axis. Again, if you put your thumb along the positive x-axis and you curl your fingers about it, that would be the positive rotation, and this negative rotation is in the opposite sense to the curl of your fingers. So calculating the sum of all the moments about the x-axis, we get the 50 kilonewton at the 3 meters coming in as a negative, the other 50 kilonewton at a moment arm of 13 meters, and lastly the 20 kilonewton force at a moment arm of 11. All those added together gives a total moment about the x-axis due to the application of these four loads of 1,020 kilonewton meters with the negative sign indicating that the rotation is in the clockwise direction. Likewise, we can now calculate the moment about the y-axis, and if you look at it, the forces that are applied are going to cause counterclockwise rotation, or again, if you took the thumb of your right hand and directed it along the positive y-axis, the curl of your fingers would be around the y-axis in the direction of rotation, so that's going to be positive. Now, the 20 kilonewton load here that's located on the y-axis it passes through the y-axis, so it produces no moment about that uh, direction axis, whereas the other 20 kilonewton load is at a distance of 10 meters. This 50 kilonewton load is also at a distance of 10 meters, and this last 50 kilonewton load is at a distance of 4 meters. So we have 20 times 10 plus 50 times 4 plus 50 times 10 for a total moment about the y-axis of 900 kilonewton meters. Now that we have the total load and the total rotation or the total moment, we can utilize um, the fact that the resultant force at some location, some x location, also has to produce the same moment. So rearranging this equation, we get an equation for x bar is equal to the sum of the moments about the y axis that are due to the four applied forces divided by the resultant force which results in an x location for this resultant force or this equivalent resultant force to be 6.43 meters and the y direction is found, or the y coordinate of the re resultant force 
is going to utilize the same form the same form of the formula so we get y bar is equal to the sum of the moments about the y axis divided by the moment or uh, the, the divided by the total resultant for a value of 7.29 meters so again the y bar location is the distance from the x-axis and the x-bar location is the perpendicular distance from the y-axis. So we get the location of the resultant force to be x equals 6.43 meters and y equals 7.29 meters. And this is just a representation of the final force system. So I've taken these four parallel forces and converted them, or, I've, or rather I have found an equivalent single force and its point of application that results in the consistent moment around the x-axis and consistent moment about the y-axis. All right, so that's the uh, end of this problem for finding or recognizing how to convert a set of parallel forces into a single resultant and determining its x-y location.